Welcome back to the Content Connection series hosted by the Learning Resource Center South at Rowan University. I'm Mary Hartman, the Fiscal Operations Coordinator for LRC South, and also a certified science teacher with over 10 years of classroom experience. Marvelous Marble Mazes is a vertically aligned activity for students in grades three through five and is being produced in conjunction with Jason Verdone's Learn and Create video for grades pre-K through two. These videos would be assets, especially for parents and homeschoolers with children in ranging grade levels. Marvelous Marble Mazes explores the next generation science standards concepts in the physical sciences by building a cardboard tube marble run. We will examine balanced and unbalanced forces to determine how the energy of our marble relates to its speed. As previously stated, this experiment is best suited for students in grades three to five, but with some adult assistance and modification can be made more complex for students in middle and high school as well. Please see the activity plan for more details. For this activity, you will need the following items. At least one dozen cardboard tubes of various lengths. It's really important that the tubes are the same diameter so they will stack on top of each other nicely. A flat piece of cardboard. This will be the base so it will need to be as large as you want your marble run to be. A marker. A ruler or tape measure. Scissors. A hole punch. This is really helpful for making the initial hole when trying to cut out the slot for the ramps. Masking or painter's tape. At least one marble. It would be helpful if you had marbles of either different sizes or different materials. A hot glue gun and glue sticks. Please note that this is only to be used with adult assistance. The activity plan and data sheet, which can be downloaded by clicking the links below this video. Now we're going to get started with our marble maze. At this point, it will be really helpful to have the activity plan in front of you for reference. As with all science experiments, planning is one of the most important steps we can take, and this activity is no different. By planning the design first, it will save a lot of time fixing problems later. The first part of the plan is to determine which tubes will be the following. Base tubes, two to four, which will be glued in place on the cardboard. Ramps, which will be cut vertically in half to form a chute for the marble to go along. And upright, which will attach to the base tubes and become the main part of your structure. Let's see how our team's plan is going. Okay guys, can you explain to me what your plan is? So what we're doing is we're using the white tubes as the bases because they're the strongest. And then for our, the rest of our structure, we're going to have these two paper towel tubes. Yeah, two paper towel tubes. And then we'll do a zigzag back and forth. <laughs> and then in the middle, we're going to have three slots that will go one, two, three. And then there will be one down here. So one ramp can go there, there. The team came up with a few helpful hints when building your structure. Try using a hole punch to make the hole in your tube. That'll give you space to fit the scissors. You might want to cut holes big enough for one of the ramps to fit inside the base tube so the marbles don't get stuck. The hot glue gun is your friend. It's very helpful to use to anchor the ramps you don't want to move in place. Now it's time to build. Be patient and have fun. Using scissors and the base tubes, cut holes large enough for the marble to come out. Using scissors and the tubes that will be ramps, cut all ramps in half vertically. Using one of your longer upright tubes, a paper towel tube for example, cut three levels of slots to be able to insert ramps into. These will be used to change the angle at which the marble will travel. Be sure there's enough space in the slot so that the marble you are using will come out. Plan out an arrangement for the base tubes on the flat piece of cardboard. Be careful to keep the pieces close enough that the ramp tubes will fit between them. The top part of all ramps will need to go all the way into the upright so the marble doesn't fall down. Trace the location of the base tubes on the cardboard. Hot glue the base tubes onto the flat cardboard, making sure the holes for the marble to escape are on the bottom. Once the glue has cooled, you'll have a structure that will support the rest of your build. 
Design the remainder of your marble rung by cutting slots in the uprights for the ramps to attach. Fit your uprights into your base tubes and tape in place. Attach the ramps to the slots you cut in the uprights. Test each addition by sending the marble down the ramp to make sure it is going where you want it to go and adjust your ramps as needed. Hot glue the ramps in place if you need to, but don't block any of the holes. Continue construction until all parts you want are in place and your marble runs smoothly throughout the maze. Now it's time to use the data sheet to assist students in making a hypothesis. Before running through your maze and timing the runs, have your students make a prediction about what they will find when they adjust the ramp positions. Okay, boys, now that your marble run is complete, how about we make a prediction as to what's going to happen? So our question is, on which ramp will the marble travel fastest? I pick the highest slot because the higher slot has more of an incline, which makes the marble go faster. The team has a suggestion before getting started. So we, we're starting the marble right here. Starting the marble in the same place will allow us to compare all of our results from the test. We're going to begin our testing with the ramp in the lowest slot on the upright with multiple slots. Set your stopwatch to zero. Start your marble at the same time as your stopwatch. When the marble reaches the base, stop the stopwatch. Record your time and observations in the data sheet. So our time is 2.82. Alright, I'll record that in the data sheet. Repeat these steps with the ramp in the middle and highest slots. Alright, are you ready for test number two for the middle ramp? Yep. Three, two, one, go. 2.04. Alright, I'll record that one in the data sheet too. Alright, are you ready for the last test for the top ramp? Yep. Three, two, one, go. 1.84. All right, I'll record that last one on our data sheet. Now that you guys are done your tests, what can you tell me about the speed of your marble through your tests? Um, so for the lowest slot, we got the lowest speed um, because it's flat, really. For the highest slot, we got a lot of speed because it has the higher incline. Can anybody explain to me how the speed of the marble relates to its energy of motion? Yeah, the, the higher ramp will give the marble more energy because it has the fastest speed, and the lowest ramp will give it the, the least amount of energy because it has the slowest speed. For the extension activity, the team decided to decrease the size of the marble and rerun the test. Test one, bottom ramp, small marble. Three, two, one, go. 2.96. There we go. Test two, middle ramp, small marble. Three, two, one, go. 2.69. Test three, top ramp, small, smaller marble. Three, two, one, go. So for your second test, you change the size of the marble. Can anybody make a comparison between these two tests and the times that you got? Yeah, um, so uh, the big marble had the fastest times in the lowest slot, middle slot, and highest slot. So why do you think that happened? Um, I think it happened because the big marble has more weight to it than the little marble. And what does that weight cause? It makes it to go faster. How does the marble move, and why does it move faster, depending on the position of the ramp? As with our balloon rocket's content connection, we discussed equilibrium. When all forces acting upon an object remain balanced, when the marble is not moving, it is at equilibrium. Some of the forces acting upon the marble include friction, the resistance an object experiences when moving over another, and gravity, the downward force pulling towards the Earth. When you push on the ball at the top of the ramp, the initial force of your finger acts to unbalance the forces that maintain equilibrium. As the ball rolls down the ramp, gravity further unbalances the forces acting on the marble, and the marble gains speed, how fast something travels.
The amount of speed the marble gathers directly relates to the amount of energy it has. The faster it moves, the more energy of motion it has. According to Newton's first law of motion, also known as inertia, an object at rest stays at rest, while an object in motion stays in motion. Either will remain unless some force acts to unbalance the other forces acting upon the object. If you increase the height of the ramp, the unbalanced force becomes even greater, causing the marble to increase its speed and its energy of motion. Conversely, if you lower the ramp, the less speed and less energy of motion the marble will have. In the same manner, again, with much larger forces, roller coaster cars travel along the track after going over the initial hill. What you may or may not know about roller coasters is that there is not usually a motor on the car itself. The coaster is pulled up the large hill by some type of conveyor system. At the very top, the conveyor will let go of the roller coaster car and will be the force of the push over the edge. At that point, the forces working on the roller coaster are friction and gravity. Balancing and unbalancing those forces are what causes you to feel the changes that either speed up or slow down the car as it moves along the twists and turns of the track. Those speed changes indicate the changes in the energy of motion of the roller coaster car. Thank you for watching this edition of Content Connections presented by LRC South at Rowan University. We hope you enjoyed this activity. Don't forget to check out the links below for the activity plan and the data sheet. On the last page of the activity plan, you will see some resources that are available at the LRC South to deepen your understanding of this activity and maybe pique your interest in other areas as well. There is also a link on the first page to our LRC Express service to make borrowing resources easier. Please check back often for more content connections on other topics, and don't forget to watch the Marvelous Marble Mazes Learn and Create video for students in grades pre-K through two.